the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit from God. Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever into the age of all ages. Amen. Today, as we just heard, is the gospel of what's called the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. And it's one of the most beautiful parables that the Lord gave in the gospel, especially that shows not only a life or the heart of repentance, but more importantly, the heart of God. <clears throat> and um, it not only shows the wisdom or the transformation of the mind that comes to the son, but more of the love and endurance of the father that endured all things, hope all things, and never fails. <clears throat> We're obviously like this young son in many ways because he knew better to stray from his father's house. And he wasted his livelihood and he wasted his inheritance on empty things. <clears throat> he knew better, but he still made the wrong decision. We oftentimes, we know better, yet we make the wrong decision time and time again. <clears throat> and many people say, well, that's because the son didn't love his father. I don't think so. I think the son had love for his father to some extent, but there, he, he loved other things more. Uh, and sometimes in our journey, which is supposed to be towards God, but it's to sin, we ignore God's love for us, we take advantage of it, or we assume that there's not going to be any serious consequences of sin because our Father is loving and forgiving. <clears throat> but not so much. And sometimes because He loves us, He wants us to fall. Um, and it's kind of like, if you think you're here in your eyes, you're here in God's eyes. And if you think you're here in, in your eyes, then you're here in God's eyes. Um, or if I have a container, say, look how big my container is, but there's nothing in it. No, but look how big it is, <laughs> but there's nothing in it. Um, compared to someone who has a smaller container, but it's full. And even if it's full, God makes it even more full. <clears throat> so how we see ourselves in our eyes is very important in terms of repentance. If we think we're okay, if we think we don't need any help from God or from, from others or uh, we, we think this little sin is not a big deal, then then we're on the wrong track. Then we're saying, okay, just give me what you owe me and let me go and live my life. Um, <clears throat> the father knew exactly what he was doing. Of course, this is a parable. It's not a real story, but the Lord gave this example to show how much he cares for us and how much sometimes we do the wrong thing. Uh, the father knew that his son would return eventually. But he needed his son to go through the process. Um, he needed to learn the lesson the hard way. He wasn't learning it the, the regular way. Um, and at the same time, the father loved the son, but he didn't want to force his love and commandments on him. But he wanted the son to willingly love him and obey and the rules of the house and such. God doesn't want to force his love upon you. He wants you to invite him into your life. And only this way can the son live in the house happily forever after. Um, the father had to let him go. Otherwise, he would be like the elder son, right? Um, lacking in love and wisdom and maturity. It's only through the process of sin and repentance where we grow in our understanding uh, toward God. That doesn't mean we have to sin to get to know God better. That's not what I'm saying. And that's what St. Paul says, God forbid. Certainly not. But if we do go through the process, we we have a closer relationship with God because of it. Some people say, I just wish I never sinned at all. Of course, it's better not to sin. But once we do, and once we experience and taste the love and forgiveness of God, it, it draws us nearer to him. <clears throat> because despite all of those weaknesses and sins and mistakes, God still embraces us. <clears throat> so let's say the father didn't let the son go. How would the son uh, look towards his father and towards his mansion and towards his life? He would con consider it to be a prison. He would consider all of the wealth to be a bribe. He would consider the relationship to be a hoax, God forbid. Um, so the idea here is, I mean, as a parent, it would be very hard for me if, I, this is not the case, but if I had a son or daughter who was rebellious, 
and disobedient and disrespectful and just wanted to go when they were not ready to live their life and make many mistakes and fall in their face. I would say, no, 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 not yet. <laughs> you can't do this yet. You're not ready. Um, sometimes at a certain age, you have to let them go, right? Even if they're not ready. Why? So that they can learn on their own. And in terms of what the father saw, he did it everything in the perfect time. Uh, as St. Paul said in the, in the Pauline epistle of today in 2 Corinthians, he says, in an acceptable time, I have heard you. In the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is an acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. <clears throat> Uh, as Abuna Daniel mentioned last week, God's timing is perfect for us. He allows us, as a silversmith, to place the silver in the fire, right? Um, and the fire is important because it cleanses us. The tribulation is important because it purifies us. He wants us to taste the blessings of the cross because it makes us pure. Uh, and he, if he doesn't put it enough, it's not pure enough. If he puts it too much, it will get ruined. He never puts it too much. He puts it until what his image is seen in us. Uh, so the father allowed the son to taste the fire of the world, to fall on his face, but not too much. Uh, in my understanding, I would think that the father was, was wise enough to maybe, he loved his son, let him go, but... I think I'd like to think I'm adding to the story. Of course, this is not in the father's, and, but this is just a parable upon a parable. <laughs> like to think maybe the father kept tabs on the son. Maybe he 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 searched around to find out what what city is he in, who is he with, how much money does he have now, uh, when can I step in? Do I if I ever need to step? Because maybe he he would have if he let him go completely. What if he went into prison? What if he got sick in the hospital? What if you know, he died, right? So the the father, I think, was always seeing, always knowing, always understanding what was going to happen and, and ready to step in. Maybe he even knew the day that his, his son was coming because he was keeping taps on him. The father of all knows everything. He knows our thoughts. He knows ourselves better than we do. So we can't say, oh, you don't understand. Uh, this is too much for me. God knows. He knows how much we are um, dealing with, whether it's too much or too little. And most of the time, it's, it's not yet. So it's not, I, I still need you to be perfected. The same, and, but God does not prevent us from making this decision. So we can say that because of his love for us, that he gives freely, he gives us the free will. And because he gives us the free will, he wants us to love him freely. We can't love him freely unless we have the free will. Look at the story of Adam and Eve, right? He could have stopped them. He could have put a force field around the tree and not allowed them to eat of the tree, right? He even could have forbidden the serpent from speaking to Eve at all or tempting her at all. Or even after he tempted, he could have stepped in and said, remember what I said, don't listen to him. But he didn't. He, he left space for them to make their decision and to learn from the decision. Um, so this is God's perfect timing. He, he needs to give free will so that we learn to love him freely. Um, and this is the process that he allows us to go a little bit and to learn from our mistakes and to learn from our sins. Um, so, uh, although we leave him sometimes or often, God never leaves us. We may leave him with our actions and ignore his presence, but we can't run away from his presence. We see that in the story of Jonah. He had to go through the fire or through the water to, to learn his mistake. And when Adam and Eve were eating in the garden, they thought that God didn't know and, and didn't see what was going on. And, and even God in a sense, pretends in the beginning not to know what's going on. Why? To bring them to repentance. Um, God called Adam and said, where are you? I know where you are. I'm just asking you, do you know where you are? 
Um, and Adam said, oh, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because uh, I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? God knew who told him. It was because he ate of the tree. Um, but again, with this conversation, he's trying to bring him to repentance, just like with the Samaritan woman of next week. He's speaking with her. He knows exactly her life. He knows exactly what she's going through, but he's having this conversation with her to bring her to the perfect repentance. And once she does, he's like, you have rightly said. And, and even more, he even adds, oh, you forgot to mention one, two, three. <laughs> um, and this is what happens when we repent and confess. Uh, and when God asked, going back to Adam, when he asked him, who told you that, that uh, have you eaten for, he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree? He was just asking, or he was directing him to just say, yes, I ate from the tree. But instead, what did he do? <laughs> Pointed the finger. <laughs> it's, it's Eve. She's the one who did it. And then he asked Eve, what did Eve do? She pointed the finger to, to the serpent <laughs> and to God, the, the serpent. So, uh, when, so when Adam uh, pointed the finger to Eve, he was also pointing the finger to God. Why? Because he said, the woman that you gave me, what's going on here? <laughs> Are you blaming yourself or blaming others and God himself? Um, so God just wants a simple confession from us. Instead, we give him excuses. Um, so in repentance, God just wants us to own up to our wrongdoings, not pointing the finger, um, not telling him, at least I'm better than so-and-so, like the older son did in, in the story, but just to say, I'm a sinner, I'm seeking God despite, for, because I have love for him, but I have weakness. Like we were saying last night, and there's, there's a beautiful, beautiful verse in the Song of Songs, uh, chapter 3, that says, By night on my bed I sought the one whom I love. Well, why are you seeking the one whom you love at night? You should do it in the morning. Why are you seeking on your bed being lazy when it's not the right time to, to find anything or anyone? It's, it's the same idea as when we seek God, when we're not ready, when we're lazy and when we're sinful and when we're in darkness, but our heart is, is, is ready to find God. That's okay. Get up and go look. Um, <clears throat> so it's never the wrong time to find God. You can't say, when I finish, um, when I overcome this temptation or this sin, then I will go to God. No, God wants us to come as we are so he could change us as we once were. Um, <clears throat> don't wait until you're better to come to God. Don't wait. It's, it's like waiting until you're no longer sick to go to the doctor or um, to, to wash yourself a little bit, you know, in the sink before you go into the shower. It doesn't make any sense. Right? <clears throat> so come as you are. Now is the acceptable time. He won't judge you. He will just come and heal you and grant your soul forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Uh, the boy left uh, the house, but when he returned, the father made him a man. Um, <clears throat> the same thing happens when we return. Uh, the Father is waiting for us. He's desperate to, to see and to speak with us and to relieve us from all of our worries and, and lift the burden of sin from us. All we have to do is to come, to say, I did one, two, three. And he said, and he will say, yes, and you did more, but uh, I have forgiven all. I just want you to be and uh, live with me. Um, <clears throat> So even though sin may ruin certain aspects of our life and our relationship with God, it can't, it doesn't have to affect our feelings for God because God's feelings for us do not change. Uh, he loves us even though we're in the midst of sin. May the Lord grant us the endurance to allow the, fear, the, the, the purification of our minds and our hearts so that we don't worry about the filth, we don't worry about the poverty, we don't worry about the darkness or the shame or the destruction that we're in. But we look to him, to the author of all things, the author of all good, who can purify us, heal us, restore us, enlighten us, glorify us, that we may live with him forever. Glory be to him now and to the age of